as we go through this, you'll decide which footprint you like a little bit better. It's just a different perspective or a different angle in how to look at the buying and selling pressure that's occurring in the market. So there's really no right footprint to use, but we're going to start off with the volume footprint. And this is this one is going to be very straightforward. It's the most straightforward out of the three. And this is going to show the total volume traded at each price level inside of a candle. So just looking at this volume footprint right off of the bat, you can see that we get the same exact information like we would on a regular candlestick, right? We have the body of the candle like we normally would. We have the top of the wick and we have the bottom of the wick. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is volume, right? Like over here, buying and selling is going to equate to all of the volume in the market. So all of the aggressive buy orders added or summed up with all of the aggressive sell orders is going to equal the volume. So we had 29 volume here at this price point. 179 volume here at this price point. We had 278 aggressive and aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers at this price point. And then you can see down here, we had a really high volume area. We had 1.2 thousand volume, and that's a little higher than the rest of the surrounding volume points. So this might be more of a significant level that you might wanna pay attention to for your trading if this is happening in your area of interest, right? This is gonna be a building block into the bid ask and into the delta footprint as we move forward here. Uh, pause the video if I'm going too fast, but volume footprint is very straightforward. Into the bid ask footprint, this is the one that I like to use the most. I use it about 80 to 90% of the time. Disregard all of the noise, right? Like these highlighted levels. This just gives us a visual of the volume at each price level. But you can see on a bid ask spread, we have a left column and we have a right column. The left column is going to be known as our bids. These are going to be all of our aggressive sell orders at each price level. Now, the right side, the right column is going to be known as our ask otherwise known as the offer. You'll hear, uh, you'll hear it referred to it as an offer all the time, and this is gonna be our aggressive buy orders in the market. Left column, aggressive sell orders. Right column, aggressive buy orders in the market. Okay, so over here, we have 684 aggressive sell orders, and over here, we have 887 aggressive buy orders. Down to the second bullet point, this is just gonna allow us to see where the aggression is stepping into the market. So over here, for example, we can see we have a lot more aggressive buy orders hitting the market, but just remember, right? We read these diagonal and over here you can see we have 178 aggressive buy orders to 56 sell orders, right? We have about a three to one imbalance. We have about three times the amount of aggressive buy orders than sell orders at this price point. So always read them diagonally. And then again, over here, you can see a lot of volume hitting the offer. We have an imbalance over here. Uh, we have low volume on the bid, right? Higher volume on the offer. Again, we're having triple digit um, volume on the offer and we're having double digit volume on the bid. Just letting us know there's a lot of aggressive buy orders here that are interested. Not only do we have a lot of aggressive buy orders interested, but we have a lack of aggressive sellers even interested at those price points too. And that's gonna even be meaningful information to me. Stacked imbalances should be used to validate your existing idea not to chase every sign of momentum. I know when you look at this right off the bat, it's like, yo, I could just scalp every stacked imbalance move on the offer or every stacked imbalance move on the bid. Remember, these should only be used to validate your trade uh, idea, not to chase every sign of momentum. And what I mean by that is, let's say we have a breakout level right here. And let's say you're looking to buy the breakout for whatever reason, whatever your strategy is. But let's say at this price point, you were looking to buy the breakout. If you see stacked imbalances start to build or start to form on the offer, that's going to give you more confidence and conviction that your trade thesis is going to be playing out, right? You might not hesitate as much pulling the trigger. You're, you're recognizing that other market participants are supporting this idea or the market's intent is supporting your existing trade thesis, right? Again, with footprint charts or any type of order flow, our job is really to try and gauge the market's intent, All right? What is the market trying to do? And how good of a job is the market doing that? So we can see over here, we got stacked imbalances on the offer. The market is trying to push up, right? Now, in hindsight, how good of a job is the market doing that? Well, it's doing a pretty good job. Not only did we push up, but even more aggressive buyers stepped into the market, letting us know this is a very strong move that is supported by a lot of aggressive positive delta, right? A lot of aggressive positive buyers stepping into the market. So main point here is use it to validate your existing idea not to trace every sign of momentum one more point before we move on from the bid ask footprint we always also want to use logic as we're given more information in the more in the market or we always want to um we always want to acknowledge the new information as time passes okay because i know 
at this price point, things look great. Now, let's say we get stacked imbalances on the offer and the market starts to consolidate up here. And then let's say we end up failing and start trading beneath this breakout level. That's new information to us, right? We know a ton of aggressive buyers started to step into the market at this price point. So if we were to get something like this, what does that now tell us? It lets us know we potentially have a lot of trapped buyers at this price point now. That's new information that we did not have before we got this breakdown. So now these stacked imbalances in this offer, we're gonna perceive that differently and we're gonna use that information differently in terms of how we're planning our execution in the market and how we're planning about going about the market, right? So um, that's how we can apply some logic to our trades there. Let's go ahead and go to the Delta footprint. Like we talked about before, same exact information like you're gonna get on a regular candlestick. We have the body of the candle, top of the wick, bottom of the, bottom of the wick, but now we have the Delta at each price point. And before we get into the Delta, we got to break down what even is delta delta is going to be the difference between aggressive buyers and sellers at each price point so here we have a positive 29 positive 49 positive 10 we have 29 more aggressive buy orders than aggressive sell orders at this price point so it doesn't mean that we didn't have aggre any aggressive sellers here right it just lets us know we had 29 more and then down here we had a negative 32 aggressive sellers so we had a negative 32 delta it doesn't mean there wasn't any aggressive buyers transacted at that level it just lets us know there were negative 32 more aggressive sell orders than buy orders and then when we move down here we can see we have some strong delta we have a negative 227 delta this one stands out from the rest of the surrounding delta so this is going to be more significant information to us right let's say we were trading a breakdown or we were trading a breakout to the downside like we talked about before, our job when we're reading footprints is to try our best to gauge the market intent. The question we always want to ask ourselves is what is the market trying to do and how good of a job is the market doing that? That's going to be the golden question whenever trading order flow. If the market is pushing down here and we're getting a lot of aggressive sell orders stepping into the market, how good of a job is the market pushing down? Is the market stalling here? Are we going to be reversing on these orders or are we getting follow through? Because if we're getting follow through, that's really going to let us know the market is really weak uh, and the market's intent is playing out, right? So this is going to help us gauge the aggression of the buyers and sellers at each price level. And it can also highlight hidden pressure or absorption occurring at different price levels or delta divergence, right? This is where delta really is going to become most useful for us with price points like this. Now you might ask, what is absorption? Absorption is going to occur whenever there is aggressive sell orders in the market, but all of the passive buy orders are absorbing those aggressive sell orders. And whenever we get that in the market, the market will typically stall or reverse. And it goes back to the golden question. What is the market trying to do and how good of a job is the market doing whatever it's trying to do if we get a lot of aggressive sell orders stepping into the market here but maybe price starts to go up that is an indication that we potentially have absorption going on in the market because how is it possible that we can have more aggressive sell orders in the market than aggressive buy orders but price is going up make that make sense how is that possible the only conclusion for that is the fact that aggressive passive orders are absorbing all of the aggressive volume to the downside and that's how the market would start to rise to the upside. So we'll get into absorption in another time. I use the bid ask footprint because I can get the volume information from the bid ask footprint and I can get the information from Delta just by looking at the bid ask footprint. And this is how I do that. Let's look at this last price point on all of these candles. All of these candles are the same exact candle. It's just on a different setting. So if we go to volume, we have 309 volume transacted at this last price level. Over here on the bid ask, it's gonna let us know how much of that volume was transacted on the bid and how much of that volume was transacted on the ask. We know that 195 of that volume of the 309 was aggressive sellers. And we know that 114 of that 309 was executed on the offer. The sum of the bid and the ask is going to give us the volume. So if I have the bid ask footprint up, I know I can just do some quick addition. If I add the bid and the ask together, that's going to be what the volume is for that price point. So it makes more sense to me for me to have the bid ask footprint on and not the volume because I can get the volume information by looking at the bid ask footprint. If we look at Delta, if we look at this last price point, we have negative 81 Delta. If we take the bid and the ask and we subtract subtract them from each other, that's going to give us a delta at that price point. So if we have 195 and we subtract 114 from the offer, that's going to give us a negative 81. That's going to let us know we had 81 more aggressive sellers, right? More aggressive sellers hitting the bid than hitting the offer, which left us with negative 81. 
So again, I'm just making my case. This is the reason as to why I like to use the BitAsk footprint because I can derive the volume information and the delta information by doing some really quick math in my head. And then I also get to use or have the luxury of using the BitAsk and being able to see these uh, imbalances on the bid or the offer while using the BitAsk footprint. Again, sometimes I'll flicker through between the volume and the delta footprint just to get a quick snapshot of what it's looking like, but usually I'll just have it sitting on the BitAsk footprint. If you're new to order flow and you wanna learn more, we're gonna be going through um, all the basics of order flow. We're gonna have an A through Z library on the foundations of order flow footprint charts on this YouTube channel, so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you wanna learn everything from the ground up, and we'll see you guys in the next video.